As humans, we look for patterns everywhere. So when we see a new story draped in the shape of a well-known fairy tale, the vibrant mix of the familiar with the new and strange can be irresistible to many of us readers. There's a reason that wrapping fairy tales and folklore in urban fantasies has proven so popular. In 1987, Charles DeLint published Jack the Giant Killer, a retelling of a fairy tale set in 1980s Ottawa. This novel, along with Terry Windling's Borderland, became part of the foundation of the urban fantasy subgenre. So, how was utilizing folk tales in contemporary settings revolutionary in the 1970s and 80s? How have fairy and folk tales influenced urban fantasy since then? Join us as we explore the roots of one of the most influential subgenres of the early 21st century. Welcome back to Morgan writing tips and writerly musings with writing tips from the pros and of course my own writerly musings. Today I'm here with fairy tales and folklore in urban fantasy. The titular panel at ShyCon 8, otherwise known as Worldcon 80, was moderated by Elma Alexander and featured Adam Stemple, Sharon Sheffield, and C.L. Polk. The insightful discussion wandered a ways away from the given description, but stayed on topic. So let's start off with resonance and liminal spaces. Writers want places and stories that resonate with readers, that despite the fiction and fantasies of the tales ring true to their experience of the human condition. One way to get your stories to resonate with your readers is by using familiar tropes. Tropes are neither good nor bad. They simply describe familiar patterns in stories. What's more familiar than a fairy tale? Urban fantasy starts with the familiar, the real world, and familiar tales help them add layers to that pre-existing resonance. Fairy tales often take place in liminal spaces, transitional spaces, be they the edge of a wood, the edge of puberty, or the edge betwixt and between life and death itself. For those who wish to mix it up, subverting tropes and flipping the reader's expectations can be a great tool, but is far more effective when starting with tropes the readers are familiar with. So let's talk about mythology versus fairy tales and folklore. Mythology explains nature, and fairy tales contextualize that by setting the stories and the world in the culture that the story is from. Our urban fantasies are no different than Beauty and the Beast in 1740s France, or The Little Mermaid in 1837 Denmark, or the tall tales of Paul Bunyan in the American frontier. We're just putting the mark of our era on them. A large difference uh, between mythology and fairy tales is that mythology usually includes gods and fairy tales very rarely do. One could argue that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a massive, sprawling, epic fairy tale, so long as you recognize that the Marvel gods are treated more as supernatural beings than true gods. So let's talk a little bit more about these tropes in fairy tales. First off, most fairy tales have a hero or heroine. The standard fairy tale hero has a man or a boy set out on an adventure and find a community along the way to his great reward. The standard fairy tale heroine has a woman or girl put in a tenuous situation where she loses her support network and makes it out thanks to both patients and outside assistance, finding a new place and or community. Or husband. Um, some writers, hoping to flip the script, try to write strong women, but end up writing what reads as a male perspective only in skirts. Um, 
Not to mention how often a female main character is used as an excuse to give a book cover a sexy woman rather than a woman showing her own strengths. Um, anyway, more tropes. The Fae. The Good Neighbors, as a nickname for the Fae, was always a polite fiction. The Fae weren't seen as good. Their human neighbors just didn't want to offend them. They're often shown as not truly good or bad, no matter which court they belong to, simply with a different logic and set of values. Or perhaps we're just a dream of the Fae. Hmm. For people, like children, who are still learning the rules of how the world works, some say that childhood is mainly a psychotropic experience. But fairy tales teach us that the world is beautiful and not safe. Which leads us into how important is fear? While much is said about the disnification of stories, they weren't the first to tone down the fairy tales, just the latest in a long line. Grimm's original tales had to be toned down before they could sell them. While many of the stories got simplified to good versus evil, there are still ones with a hint of nature in them. If you get in their way, they'll destroy you, but it's nothing personal. After all, nice is different than good. Fairy tales can still instill a fear of the other. Even if it's you feeling different than you're told you should, what could be more of a loss of control than becoming a werewolf? Travelers and the homeless could be monsters in disguise, or gods you'd be cursed to turn away. Many fairy tales require horror elements to work, and subversions of those expectations can be very effective. To this day, there are places where stories have more sway. Should you ask an Irish farmer or an Icelander if they believed in fairies, they'd likely laugh and tell you no. But if you suggested they build a road or plow through a natural circle of mushrooms or stones, there's a good chance they'd rather go around it. You don't quite believe, but just in case. At their core, fairy tales demonstrate a need for empathy and compassion. Some suggestions from the panel members included Deathless by Catherine M. Valente, the Kate Daniels series by Alona Andrews, War for the Oaks by Emma Bull, Wizard of the Pigeons by Megan Lindholm, otherwise known as Robin Hobb, Fool on the Hill by Matt Ruff, uh, the movie Pan's Labyrinth by Guillermo del Toro, Moonheart by Charles DeLent, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, and Implied Spaces by Walter John Williams. I'll list these below because it's hard to translate spoken words into titles. Closing Thoughts In the end, the heroes and the fae and the monsters, they're us. We invented these stories and they are a reflection of us. Do you like your fairy tales and folklore in your urban fantasy or other genres? What are some of your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching and tune in again next week for more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.